Welcome back to the Trimmed Up series. It's a big week, the biggest week of the year for Bass Pro Tour anglers. It's our championship, Red Crest. Let's break it down. While Lay Lake is a good sized lake in the sense that you can run 50 miles dam to dam, the Coosa River is famous for its spotted bass, but it has a lot of largemouth too. As an angler, are you gonna decide to go for the spots? Are you gonna chase the largemouth? Or maybe to win and in every fish counts, you've gotta mix a little bit of both. So this is the first year we've had three days of practice. Typically it's been two prior to this, so having three full days of practice allows you to test a lot of different waters. With three full days of practice, I was able to fish dam to dam. Day one, I started out scoping, looking for you know some of those nomadic spotted bass, seeing if they were on bait fish, and, and I found that, which was really, really exciting, but what I didn't find was the quality that I needed. Um, I caught about 30 bass the first day doing exactly that, live scoping, jig head minnow, and I caught like four scoreable spotted bass. The quantity is great, the quality, not so much. And then when the sun got up that afternoon, I went shallow, kind of rolled around a little bit, and I saw several really nice bass on the bed, which was exciting, because that is one of my favorite ways to fish. Day two of practice rolls around, and it is a chilly, chilly morning. Ice all over my boat, um, but I fished a little bit more like your traditional Coosa style, like river style fishing. I ran all the way up to the dam, right below Logan Martin, and fished in some crazy fast current. One of the things that that just has, it has a better quality of bass up there, but the population is smaller. There's not near as much spawning habitat and things like that. So you're dealing with, can I generate enough bites just to compete with the guys down the lake? Now I'm gonna get the quality bites, but can I generate enough? And frankly, couldn't generate enough bites. I fished all day up the river, caught one scoreable bass until I ran back down, fishing a community hole spot. Caught three pretty nice bass off of it, all spots. It's a spot to me that's like maybe, okay, I wanna fish this. If I'm gonna fish it, I better start on it. Um, so that's that's probably, I've got like the first piece of the puzzle of how I'm gonna approach this tournament, but that's really all I have. I have one piece. With two days of practice down, at least one to go. Day three. Scope around out here for a second. Catfish. Boy, he thumped it so hard, son. No wonder I missed him. We don't like cats or catfish in this part, in this boat. What's that? Uh-huh. The spots are over there. Okay. I think it's another catfish. He ran at it. He ran at it so hard and thumped it so hard. I think we're on the kitty fish hole here, dude. Another catfish for sure, skis. I done messed that cast up. Wow. They were bass. Why you just can't catch them if you ain't scoping? Catfish, I think. He fast. That's gotta be a bass. Well, we got us a keeper spotted dog. The first uh first fish on the new Kistler Mitch Troll rod, eh? Ooh. Testing it out today for you guys. Pop that dude, that's like a Where that where that's up? That's like a 260 probably. Let's see here. That is a three pound one ounce spotted bass. Ooh. Dude, he's so fat. <laughs> Sorry about the camera. I'm having fun, okay? Let me be. I just need like there to be an area of a bunch of them, you know? So we've got a bunch of current out on the main river right now. Typically, the spots on the Coosa live on the main river. They do live on the main river, but um, there's so much current that the bait's not hanging out there. They've kind of pushed back in the pockets. I mean, it's just kind of a medium sized main lake pocket here. It's where all the bait is, so that's kind of where a lot of the fish have track two too so we're just kind of kind of trying it around there's there's so much bait it, it'd blow you away but even really finding the bass in this stuff there's a lot of trash fish catfish everything's out here taking advantage of it we fished for a long time to, to get one score of a bite it hadn't it hadn't been great this morning as you can see i, I thought that was probably going to be a catfish so let's go make me throw it a few more dots here and see if we can't get some action that's not a bass that's not a bass <laughs> I don't know what I have here. It's a gar, I think. It was a really big mark. It's a nine pound spotted bass. It's not a catfish, I don't think. I think it's a gar. It's too, eh, maybe it is catfish. <laughs> it's not small, whatever it is. It's a drum. Honestly, putting up, putting up. <laughs> the old Coosa River smallmouth. What was that about? I don't know. Bass. 
It's a large mouth. What are you doing out here? I mean, you built like a bussy brake bass. Yeah. Might be a little better one there. Uh. Might have. He's be, he's be close to score. He's not too kind there. He's like a 112, 189. Nah. It's like a 114, 115. You know what they say about close? Not enough? No cigar. Oh. No, they say but no cigar. It's just that time of year, dude. There gets to be a time, like especially on a really shallow fishery, you kind of have to start thinking shallow. I mean, like this morning, the water temp right here is 54 degrees. It's not great, but every afternoon, because um, we've been having cold nights, the water's been getting in 60, 62 back and stuff like this. And um, so the fish are already, you know, back here. I've seen some on beds, you know, really starting to think about doing their deal. But when it's cold like this, they just straight up don't want to bite if they're back here or they slide out up and down like in the mornings and evenings. So, um, you know, you got, you kind of got a tail of, of two lakes. You got the spots, which, to me, just with the amount of current, they haven't locked on the beds yet. You know, they're still bait chasing and, and doing that whole deal. And then you've got the largemouth, and, and the largemouth are 100% wanting to spawn. I'm not saying all of them, but but a, a vast majority of them. And, and we've got a warm week coming. So like, uh, while like today, this afternoon will be good, but this morning's terrible for what I'm doing right now. Um, you gotta kind of fish for the conditions that are coming in the tournament. And, you know, if I can go through an area this morning and get two bites, it might be something that turns into six or eight bites come, come tournament time. So fish a lot of stuff that's not great right now, but I think could be great in a couple days. I know I'm going to swim this jig, and all of a sudden, just when I'm least expecting it, one's going to come up out of one of these stupid holes and go... Ooh. That had to have been a bass right there doing that. You see that? I couldn't really see my bait, but clearly he darted to it and said, no, thank you. Spot. Oh, it's a large mouth. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. They're pretty largey, huh? We're on them now. It's so close to the boat, it's hard to even tell what's going on. They're bass. Little pound 10, pound 12 butterball. I don't like spotted bass, man. They don't hold on cover. They just swim around. They're hard to pattern. Hard to not sit on stuff, you know? That's why we like them. I'm really, honestly, wasting time right now. Like we're scoping around. We're getting a few bites, not many. This isn't how I want to be fishing. I don't want to fish a really good shallow spot and not know it because it's, you know, too early in the morning, too cold, whatever. You know, I might find me a pocket where you could, you know, catch you five or six spots and that'd be great. I'm already starting to see the water temp kind of come up. There's a few of them laying around here, so wouldn't surprise me. You mind going all the way to the back for me? Like standing on the back deck. Yeah. Lift my nose up. So we're already like almost to 58 in here. And it's going to be like 64 back here by the end of the day. There goes a dang good one right there. Nice. Just spooking though. I don't think he's on a bed. That's all we do is scope some way. Yeah, we did. We went from live scope to eye scope right now. If we aren't looking at them, we aren't catching them. All right, let's get out of here. If I looked all that stretch and they weren't, they weren't popping. There's been one on that bed in the last little bit. I'll see you later in the week, buddy. He is spooky though. He's been caught. I, I, man, I can't find, I'm just catching three pounders. I, I can't I, find any big ones. I can't find no big ones. I don't have like 17 today. I can't find no big ones. Nah, I just don't know where they're at. I don't know where the big females are at. I guess that water camp's just got to get up. Maybe the afternoon will be better for it. I think the afternoon just is, I mean, if you're in the dirt, it's better for sure. They're coming, coming to me. Yeah. They get there. I got one of the right buzz baits in here. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a practice buzz bait too. Perfect. It's a fun way to catch them. But you never catch them on it. It's a buzz bait. If I can rig this on here with no hook. Green kinda... pumpkin all white? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me about it, okay? I'm... They don't come up and bite a buzz bait because it's white or black. They bite a buzz bait because it's coming across their head going. Everybody can just leave me alone. It's 
See, it'd be cool if you could find a big one out in something like this, you'd probably have it to yourself. And we're not gonna go far. We may be missing the best stuff back there, but it didn't look like it was any cleaner. Where'd we go? Oh, well, we came, uh, we came down the pond here, um, trying to just get in the cleanest water we could, which we've done that. Uh, this is by far cleaner water. This is an area where I saw some fish on day one of practice. And really, we're just, <coughs> we're trying to look for fish that um, we're gonna be able to catch day one and then uh, worry about the rest later. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know if this is really gonna have a lot of longevity to it through the week, but I just wanna, just wanna try it. I'm gonna worry about the ones that are fresh pulling up in other areas of the lake later and just try to find as many as I can down here for now. He's got eggs down if he's that locked. Yeah. I'm gonna guess he's like a pound nine, be my guess. Non-scorable. It's probably about a pound eight. We'll spawn it. That's the problem is a lot of these bucks are little bitty old things. That's a two pounder, I think. I'm gonna try it right there. I'll try him later. Dang it. I almost saved it. Shoot. Still the GoPro. <laughs> I fell in the lake <laughs> for the first time since, I don't know, it's probably been a 10 years since I've actually fallen in. I've jumped in before, but hit a little stump while doing a 180 to look at a bed fish and got soaked from the waist down. We kind of caught ourselves. We got back in the boat very, very quickly. Didn't want any of those lay lake alligators to grab a hold of us. I was wondering what that noise was. Look at that armadillo. They call it the ribeye of the sky. And you can't even see down in these holes. What did we do while we were drying off? We eye scoped the entire time. We tried to look for bed and fish. Um, wasn't great, man. I was I was hoping it was going to be good this afternoon. It was it was very below average. Like I was I was hoping I was like today was going to be the day where we'd start to see a move up and a lot of empty beds. You know I think it's going to happen between now and the first day of the tournament. Tomorrow is another really warm day, and we got really warm nights ahead of us. Just kind of have to hope. Like I have to find these areas that are the best that I can find, and just hope they show up. Yeah, we're scoping and hoping all at the same time. Looks like this red crest is gonna be one where we have to do it on the fly because on them is not what we are right now. They're coming to me. That seems to be the word of the week. They're coming to me. And I hadn't had many bites, but they're coming to me. For somebody that is gonna be true. For most people, it's not gonna be true. Backwards. Oh, almost got it. And I wish I could tell you it's gonna go down or on them. But to be honest, one of the tougher practices I've had. I like the way the lake's setting up on paper. I mean, we've got a warming trend, semi-stabilizing after a flood. Like everything is telling me they're gonna flood the bank and they're gonna be in the right mood, you know? A lot of times bad practice can turn into a good tournament, but I am gonna fish my strengths this week. We're gonna fish for spots probably the first maybe entire period. And then after that, we're putting all the live scope and spotted bass stuff away. We're picking up braid. Frogs, swim jigs. The only lame thing we're gonna throw is a wacky rig. But outside of that, it's gonna be all fun stuff. And uh, hopefully we can run into them. All right, tackle is about 80% eh, done, but we gotta head into Birmingham. We've got media day today. So filming segments, whatever they have planned for me. Then we've got the gifting suite. Everybody loves free stuff. Then we're back to tackle, then it's game time. So it's getting close. Quick and easy. These are the kind of things you film before the tournament. And there's a very good chance if you suck, they don't get used. But if you do really well, they turn out looking really, really cool. So hopefully they get used. That's true. I'm good. Oh, man. How are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, yeah. I need some headlights. Absolutely. Thank you guys, I appreciate yes, it. Alton, hey, how are you? Thanks are you? so much for doing the show. Yeah, it was, it was so much that fun. Was, that it was, was good. Was so. Alton, good to meet hey, you all. Alton, good to meet you. What's up? I feel like a pack mule. It was a long way to carry all that crap. If this video gets 50,000 likes, I'll give away this cooler. Ship it straight to your door. Here's your riveting content. Hang on, I can't show you that yet. Dropping next week, probably about the time this video drops. The Q-Bomb.
That's legit. The color's nice. It has Japanese on the package. That's how you know it's good stuff. Yeah, second's acceptable. I mean, we always strive for first, but like, if you could tell me right now, Alan, you walk away with 50,000 bucks in a second place, I'd probably be like, after a tough practice, I'd be like, okay. Is that bad? <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, a second place, uh, it's it's a confidence builder. Like it stinks to come close and, and miss the miss the goal, but yeah, tripped on the top step. However, we can compete, and um, you know, builds confidence. And and like these type of tournaments are tournaments of their own. Like the way you prepare, the mental thought process, how you compete is completely different because it is swinging for the fences. It's like be a little bit riskier and like fish for the win, and that may mean I strike out. You're gonna see a lot of guys, and it doesn't matter if it's Red Crest, the Classic and they just bomb. And that's not because they're bad anglers, it's because they're fishing to win. And when you fish to win, you're fishing risky. I think I know where the bass are gonna go and where they, they haven't been, but where they're gonna go to. And I prepared for that. So I'm preparing for where I think they're going, but not where they were. And we could strike out, we could be smart, I don't know. If you guys wanna see second place finish from Redcrest last year, click right up here in the corner. It's gonna be my favorite day, knockout round. We caught a monster bag. It's a lot of fun. The Chungus okay. boys were created. The Chungus boys were created there, dude. There's mosquitoes everywhere. Mm -hmm.